What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's up, it's bro? Thursday, guys. It's Thursday, which means it's brother empowerment. Yes, it is. We're back again. Yeah. Really? 2020 has already started out to be wonderful. Yes. But before we get into all of that, bro, how was your week? Uh, my week has actually been really good, actually. So it's been pretty chill. I've had to spend a whole lot of money. The weather's been nice. And I had a productive. I had a productive conversation with one of my managers today about expanding my role at work, which means I may be able to get a bigger bag. So I'm totally asking for a loan. I just want to let you know that. <laughs> I'm broke. I'm broke. I'm totally asking. I'm totally asking for a loan. But uh, but uh, it's been good, brother. How about you? My week has actually been fantastic. I can't wait to tell you guys all of the cool things that are happening in the Love is a Parable world. Yes. So I'm going to wait. Yes. Because before we do that, we got a special guest, our first guest of 2020. One and, only. and boy, <laughs> we don't know what we in for, and neither do you. <laughs> our brother is on, brother Wally Blake. Tell him about you. Tell him who you are. Tell him what you're about. Light need to be. You need to face the light, though. Yeah. Face the light. I'm in the light. There you go. Yes. Uh, hold on one second. Yes, cause I'm in my truck, y'all, as y'all can see. This is um, part of what I do. I'm a truck driver. Uh, my name is Abdul Wali Malik Muhammad Blake. That's my cover. Okay. Uh, otherwise, people also know me as King True. Um, you know, that's my righteous name. Yeah, it's the um, real name. I'm a father at the end of the day. Uh, I'm a spokesman for, you know, my people. You know what I mean? The original man and black woman, you know what I'm saying? Um, peace to everyone else. I love everybody on this planet. Um, but I am who I am first. Um, that's it, man. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a spokesman for, I'm a spokesman for the people that want to miss, you know? <laughs> okay. I definitely, okay. I definitely understand that. Um, one of the great things, guys, about Wally is that he's very um, opinionated, but he does come with a wealth of knowledge. And he does come with strong opinions about certain things. One of the cool things I thought you was going to say, um, talk about this, is that you actually grew up in um, a very diverse, somewhat contradicting type environment because you was raised um, by a Muslim father and a Christian mom. So that whole duality concept you were introduced to early on. So I'm, I'm very interested to see um, how you will address some of those topics because you're coming from basically two different worlds and you're making it work to be who you are. Yeah. So I think that that's phenomenal. That's interesting. For real. Um, we got to highlight some people, bro. We already got Tara on. Hey, Tara. Hey, Tara. Aquarius is on. Hey, Aquarius. Kerwin Pittman is on. What's up, Kerwin? Sean is on. What's up, Sean? My mom is on. Hey, Miss Garnett. Um, Tashia is on. What's up, Tashia? Michelle is on. Hey, Michelle. Rob Walker is on. What's up, Rob? What's going on? Okay, so this week is bananas because um, Love is a Parable is going to college. We actually are doing a special training down at Fedville Technical College in Fedville, North Carolina. Um, seats are limited, <laughs> so you definitely want to sign up if you're going to sign up for those classes because classes are actually happening. We have people signing up. Like as soon as we get through one class, we have people signing up for another one. So this is great if you're in that Fedville area. So I'm talking to you if you are in Spring Lake, Hope Mills, um, Red Springs, Parkton, Lumberton, Clinton, um, Eastover, no matter where you are in that um, area, make sure you sign up because um, there is conversation about possibly um, expanding this in that area. And I can't tell too much right now, but there is a lot of great things that are happening with Love is a Parable in that regard. Also, today is one of my favorite artists' birthday, um, the late Aaliyah. Halton. Yeah. Um, it was so funny because Michelle did a post about it and I was like, she was like, was she famous before or did the death make her more famous? And I was like, man, mm -hmm. you had to grow up in that time because yeah. Aaliyah was like, she gave hope to a whole generation. Mm -hmm. And those who don't know me and Aaliyah, you say what now? 
Right. And a lot of people credit Aaliyah for their start because, you know, Aaliyah, before she was 21, was already making 10 million. Yeah. So she was actually doing something. We're talking about making 10 million in the 90s. Right. So um, happy birthday, Aaliyah. Um, I don't I don't know if y'all know, but um, Odell Beckman Jr. might be yeah. going to jail. I'm, I'm sure that he's going to get his lawyer to handle it. It's just one of those things where... I think but looking from the video, he should. It was a. It seemed like a malicious slap. It was very. It was out of order. He was doing the absolute most, and I think even still, he's gonna get his lawyer to handle it. It's gonna be washed away. I think at the time, it was something that was newsworthy because he was right there. They won the championship. He went to LSU, so it, I think it was just a combination of things. And yes, he was being he was being really really extra with it. But as far as you know, all that other stuff, he's going to get his lawyer to handle it. It's going to be washed away. I don't think anything's going to happen. And please leave people butts alone. Just stop touching really? people's butts. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Butts are off limits. Just leave them alone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Trump's impeachment starts on Tuesday. Pelosi signed the papers today. So I'm interested to see how this is going to turn out because I have several different people on my timeline. <laughs> so I'm very interested to see how this is going to go. Turf wars are going to begin. Yeah, I mean, it's an election cycle, so all the, to me, all the rah-rah, and mind you, you know, the impeachment process is layered, so just because a, you know, as as most of us know, just because a president is impeached, per se, does not mean he's removed from office. It's a two-step process, more so, probably closer to three than it is two, but it's it's a, it's a multi, multi-step multi process, and so my personal opinion is that it is a a circus show to show that, hey, we're at least doing something because it's an election cycle. So that's what my take is. I think historically, statistically, historically and statistically, most presidents do two terms. There have only been maybe, I think, four ever in the history of this country that have not done a second term. And it has that's been right. a... Hmm? You think that that's right? What? Where does these statistics come from? I mean, these are actual six Google... 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 Google. <laughs> Google, <laughs> Google of all statistics. Most presidents, I mean the overwhelming majority of presidents, do two terms. Okay. I don't have the statistical. Uh, <laughs> I mean, anybody can Google that right now. There's no, there's no mic. It, it's. Definitely the last four was. I mean, like, like I said, most. I mean, we've had 45 presidents up to this point. And I've only, like I said, I think only four have been removed from office and not done a second term. That's it. I don't know. Well, you got your phone so you can Google it to see how many presidents it is. <laughs> I'm going to do it right now then. Let's continue. <laughs> okay. So we want to definitely get into it. Oh, no, no. Michelle was saying she's a fan. She was just trying to figure it out. So um, <laughs> definitely, Michelle, I wouldn't even say that. I said you made that post and it had us thinking. And then you got um, Tori that's on. What's up, Tori? He said we got Wally on the show. Yep. That's <laughs> he's why he's here. That's why he's here. <laughs> And then we got Felicia on. What's going on, Felicia? Latrenda is on. I have to also say this. Happy Founders Day to my wonderful sorors of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. Blue Phi. Okay, I had to do it by myself. I had to do it by myself. Thank you. But um, so let's do it. People having ill intentions, um, learning to forgive without an apology. Learn to forgive without an, an, an apology. What are your thoughts? Um, before we even get into this, I Googled that, man? four presidents. William Howard Taft, Herbert Hoover, Jimmy Carter, George H.W. Bush. What are the only ones who did That only served one term. John F. Kennedy. Just saying. <laughs> Washington. I'm just saying. Yep. I'm just saying. I question these statistics because I can name a few presidents right now. <laughs> you know what? No. These, I'm these Googleable. <laughs> but no. We'll yes. go back to it. We'll go back to it. So, the whole thing off. But go ahead. While I was about to say something, though, he said, ooh. What? So, what you going to say about um, learning to forgive without an apology? What are your thoughts? Oh man, learn to forgive without an apology. Um, 
I guess that's like, you know, paying your haters away. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody asking for money. Instead of keeping the person there, you know, holding a big, you know, uh, conference about it, just give them the $20 so they can go away. That's like paying your, you know, paying your haters away. You know what I'm saying? I guess, you know, if, you know somebody that you don't want to really deal with, you really just got to you forgive yourself for even, be, you know, being around that person and letting them lead you to a negative place. You know what I mean? I think once you forgive yourself, you forgive your, that person by default. You know what I mean? So that's kind of one way. I mean, yeah, that's, that's possible. It's possible. It's possible. You know? Interesting. No, interesting enough, I actually agree with that. Like, a lot of times, the apology is not for the offender. The apology is for the offended. Right. And right. It's, it's, it, it is, you know, about... <laughs> Really, when somebody extends an apology, it is something to make you feel better, but you've already decided before an apology is administered whether or not you're going to forgive them. Um, Al said, forgiveness is for you and must start and must start a war. Oh, forgiveness is for you and most start a war to get a second term. He went, he did two things. Forgiveness is for us, and then he went back to the president and said, most start a war to get that second term. Yeah. Terry said I was wrong for bringing up dead presidents, but he wasn't dead at the time. I mean, he died in office, but yeah. I, I had Gerald Ford said this was actually fine. What about five. Lyndon B. Johnson? No, it's five. Did Lyndon B. Johnson yes. get two terms? Five. I didn't know he did. Five presidents out of 40, so that's like, what, 90-something percent? Well, anyway, George Washington, he did one term. George Washington did all the terms. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but but no, which what you brother, what you brother say, which the points that you brother bring up, getting back to the original question, you know, it all makes it all makes sense. Oh, really? That was it? No, I'm just. Saying. I mean, you made a whole statement. <laughs> you was like back to the original question. <laughs> no, but but, but no, it but makes really, sense. But really, what uh, apologies are a tricky thing because. There are there are some folks out there who really don't care to hear an actual apology. They would rather just you correct the action that offended them, and so they really don't care about the apology. Then some there are some folks who have to hear the apology because a sincere apology, rather, and because to them, you know, that's what it, to give them a sense of I guess relief. They need to hear the words. I mean, I, I definitely understand. I understand the whole process of an apology yeah. but if we really think about it an apology it is really one-sided mm -hmm. um we try we try to say things to sound politically correct and soothe people emotions but at the end of the day the the actual apology mm -hmm. is really for someone it's for the offended because if you mm -hmm. really think about it, it it's it's an apology is not necessarily mm -hmm. assault um attached to a malicious intent yeah it's just about an offense that have occurred, whether it was a strong one, a negative one, an indifferent one. It was just about that offense. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're really addressing. But the only one that can assess whether or not they were offended yeah. is the offended. Yeah. But how does that work in a uh, romantic sense? What do you mean? When you're married, when you're married and, you know, your partner does something wrong and doesn't apologize. Verbally, because you know, communication is one of the biggest things in the relationship. Sometimes you have to give the apology of verbally let that person know, like, Look, I love you and I, and I apologize. I'm sorry for what I did. You know, if you imagine if you never said that, I'll, I'll just go on record saying that me and my wife both are Scorpios, so you can just imagine. Wow, <laughs> but no. Um, we typically apologize even in the discussion, like, because both of us will say things a certain way, and we're like, yeah, that came out wrong, my bad, and we keep it moving, but, and then most of the times when we think about it, like, you really think about, the, like, I'm one of them who think a lot, so soon as, like, the argument is over, I still think, um, a while and then I'll come back and we'll talk about it again and was like, you know what, I apologize. That was yeah. a misunderstanding and stuff like that. Yeah. So um but the apology yeah. initially is for the offended. Right. Now um for the offender, um
through relationship, meaning whatever type of dynamic that they, that, that individual has mm -hmm. with the one who's offended will sometimes determine because sometimes the apology, the initial apology isn't, isn't as sincere as the second or third one when you finally went back and thought about it. Like you say, I'm sorry, man. Mm -hmm. But then you really think about it, you say, you know what? I need to apologize to you again. Mm -hmm. So the initial one is to soothe the offended, but when them, them other ones happen, it's about the other person. But at the end of the day, it goes back to the original question. If a person chooses not to um, apologize, it's your choice what you want to do or how you want to deal with that person. Mm -hmm. And anything happens after that is a residue or direct response to that initial action of whether I'm going to stay, whether I'm going to tolerate it, or whether mm -hmm. anything after that, because you're opening the door for anything. So you decide, is the apology worth it for me to move on? Or if not having the apology is going to make me stand here until you give it to me. But you stand your ground, you hold your ground, but it's all about a choice, and you decide from that moment if you're going to forgive them, whether they say it or not, to be honest. Right. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. We got a couple of things. Um, Sean Stewart said, it's definitely for you. You, for you and you. <laughs> only, only it's the way to let go of the negativity and allow room for positivity. Apology is a way to let go of the negativity and allow room for positivity. Dot Williams is on. Dot Williams is on. Hey. She said, is this just for guys? Nope. Dot. I mean, it's guys who are on the show, but it's about empowering guys. But as you can see, it's several women that are on. Joseph Stout is on. Our friend all the way out in Arkansas. Um, Sean Stewart said, rumor is George Washington wasn't the first president. Yeah, we know that. It was, yeah, we're not going to get on that one today. Cornelius Kirk is on. What's up, Cornelius? Robert Walker said, 10 presidents did not get reelected, according to Wikipedia. Well, there are some, it's a discrepancy. A cookable offense. Because some of them served a bunch of years, but technically they only one term. So I guess it just depends on. No, serious. I don't know about this group. I don't know about your research. I'm, right. I'm questioning right. everything at this right. point. My cousin Steve is on. What's up, Steve? Mickey Sanders is on. And um, they said that's why <laughs> they saw a real apology is changed behavior. Yeah. Correct. You said that's why they say that. Yeah. Um, I disagree with that, though. A real apology isn't a changed behavior. Well, that's the expectation of a offender. I think, I think a real apology is just Acknowledging that, that you were wrong. When you can acknowledge that you were wrong, yeah, it's good for both parties. It's good for you and the person you're with. Because that then you can say, okay, wow, I really messed up here. I really gotta say I apologize. I gotta do something. But not only apologize, back that up with something showing that you really care about you know. Well, you just agree with the statement, man. Yeah. I'm you just agree with the statement. What? I, I agree. I agree, but I just feel like, you know, it, it, it really is difficult to apologize. Because it's like, I mean, I've, I've heard the saying that the best apology is change behavior. I mean, a real an apology is an apology. I mean, so as far as what the real one, I would say that I don't agree with that. But I do agree with that a uh, the best apology is change behavior. Um, because, I mean, if a person apologizes and keeps doing the same thing over and over again, I mean, the apology becomes sort of hollow. The change behavior is, to me, you know, speaks volumes. But what if it is, um, I apologize that this offends you, but I'm going to keep doing me. <laughs> yeah. See, a lot of times, yeah. the only reason why I'm saying that you can't put the, a change behavior because you run the risk of allowing someone else to govern your life. Yeah. And if you fall into that trap of never pleasing them, your apology will never be good enough. Right. It's always going to be brought up something. So the change behavior should be intentional by you in something that you want to do right. and not governed by that person and necessarily attached to the apology. Yeah. That's, that's my thing about that. It's like, I can apologize, but we do have to sit down and talk about um, expectations because what if I don't want to change into what you want me to change into? There's that word, expectations. Yeah, and I think that a lot of people, I don't think nothing is wrong about having expectations, yeah. but the person who sets the ex expectations must realize that's your scale to measure whether or not you'll stay or go. Right, yeah, and the, 
And as we always say about expectations, no one is obligated to meet them. Like no one, you can have expectations all day long, but no one's obligated to meet your expectations. You just have them. <laughs> Robert Walker talking about, I just um, apologize to shut her up. <laughs> he said Aries. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> she probably already knows. Right. Right. Because I be small. I ain't trying to hear that. <laughs> okay. So the next one is closure really necessary? Um, while you still hold on, Tara said there's more than one type of offense, so more than one type of apology. Forgiveness is a different layer. I agree yeah, with that. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Definitely. Yeah, most definitely. There's no uh, argument there. Wally, can you straighten your camera up? You see, I, I think he's I think he's gone. You see what happens? People in technology just don't yeah. ever work right. I think he froze up and he bounced. Um, but so, well, yeah. Well, yeah. His closure necessary. necessary. So while waiting for Wally to come back, go ahead and tackle this. So closure in the sense of having some kind of grandiose or heartwarming conversation with like they do in the movies with the with the with the offendee mm -hmm. um and get, getting closure i don't think that part is necessary i really think that closure is within oneself and i think that that's i think that the word closure and the the thing that is closure has been morphed or warped per se because I think that closure is really thinking about the situation or the offense or what it have you in your own mind and processing it and being okay with whatever, be okay with what you're okay, whatever outcome. If you say that, you, if you feel like you need to have the conversation with, the, with that person, if you feel that you process and you're like, okay, I'm good with that, I don't need to talk about it. I think it's really closure starts and ends with you. That's how I feel about it. I definitely agree with that. I think that um, a lot of people, I made a post about this, which um, which was kind of funny. I made a post about this even today because I thought about it. Like a lot of people say that they want closure, but they really want revenge. Yeah, they really want you to feel the pain that they felt. Yeah. Like I want you to feel this because this is how you hurt me. This is what you've done to me. But that's not really closure. Yep. And no matter how much they apologize, it turns into that I want you to feel my pain. Yeah. And so. Closure is definitely a decision on what one want, what one um, wants to do. Yep. Meaning, do I need this closure to let go? Do I need this closure to move on? Mm -hmm. Do I need this closure to stay? Yep. Do I need this closure to stand? And I do agree that all of that happens inside because if you're not, if you're not clear on what your closure is for you you run the risk of having a damaging relationship with whoever that person is, or you're putting that person in a, in a, in a place where they will never be able to come out of it because the type of closure that you want, they may not be able to satisfy. It happens sometimes. Yeah. Um, let's see. Tara say, I agree that closure is within. Some folks have issues with folks that have died. Got to move beyond. Yeah. Yeah. Wally, can you, you back? Yeah, I'm back. You see me? Yep. Yeah, 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 we got you. What's your yeah, thoughts? Oh, man, I, I, I agree with what you're saying. I mean, you know, closure. I think the best thing that the main thing that we have to understand is that we can't control what any other party other than us and ourselves do. I can't control what my wife does. I mean, I, I love her. I'm going to be with her for life. You know, I'm a hope for the best and prepare for the worst, though. So, you know, I don't put nothing past nobody. Uh -huh. Like, the whole thing what you're saying with the expectations. I have no expectations. You know, I'm going to go with off of everything that you bring me. Okay. You know what I mean? And the moment that you bring me something that I feel like I can't handle, I'm going to, you know, you know, you know, let that be known. And um, I think sometimes people don't let those things be known. I think, like, people are so high off of the idea of being with the person that they can't handle losing them. You know what I mean? I think when you love somebody, don't love them too much the so way you're scared to lose somebody. Love them enough to let them go. You know what I mean? And when something like that, toxic things happen like that, it's easier because you already prepared your mind that this can't happen. It's okay to say that this person might not be here in the next year. 
because of something maybe that I might do, or maybe something I might have dealt with, maybe something they haven't dealt with. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, things are not. You know, things are not for certain in life. That's just not how it goes. You know, change is everlasting. You know, things switch his hands all the time. So that's what you know, we got to keep that in mind. I actually agree with the um the, the sentiment of what you were saying, mm -hmm. but I do want to clarify where I know that we probably will differ just a little bit is that um I believe that I believe that love never fades, never dies, once you have it, now you can take it with you and all of those things, but I don't want us to confuse loyalty and commitment with love. Mm -hmm. Because my loyalty and my commitment is what makes me stay. Right, not my love. Not my love. And the other thing is, hold on, I just wanna clarify because you said love them enough to let them go. Love them enough, no, love you enough. You gotta love you enough because I can't begin. Loving you is loving them. So you got to be okay with that decision. I agree with that. You have to be okay with that decision. And love has nothing to do with it. The commitment, because there, is, there are people who love people who are not committed to people. And there are several people who are committed. They don't have anything to do with love. I know people who have been married for 20 years. Wow. And it has nothing to do with love. It has nothing to do with lust. It's yeah. just a commitment and a deal. Yeah. Let me, let me, let me, let me say this, right? Some people say love, and they don't realize it's more of an infatuation. Infatuation. If you look at the word infatuation, if you, in your mind, change it to love, it would make sense. Infatuation is an extra. It's, it's a uh, intense feeling or intense want for something you know what i mean like you really want this like you have a deep emotional connection with something and it's short-lived you know what i mean i've heard people say they, they love each other and you know i can't live without this person and then next month it's like oh you know me i ain't together no more boy, boy. it's you know but they call it love though so it's like for me right and how i look at it and you know Everybody's different. Everybody can have their pain. Um, but me, for me, well, love is for me. Love is, it is loyalty. It's a contract. It's an agreement. It's, it's like, like in the Bible, you know, the covenant, the covenant of love, the covenant of God's love. The co covenant is what? It's a, co it's, 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 it's a contract. It's an agreement. You know what I mean? It's a lot of or something, a hold on something. Okay. You know what you understand what I'm saying? Oh yeah. You know, we, me, we got you. Yeah, for me, that's what love is. I'm saying it is an agreement. Right. This is this is about loyalty and, and you know, keeping that uh this I, I'm a, on a, my last thing on love. Love is wanting to leave but not leaving because you understand what staying together will bring you. You understand the importance of being together. So you're not, not losing for personal reasons, but staying together because you know what the both of you can do. You know, there's a lot of reasons to leave somebody. You can leave somebody for anything, but you stay together because of what you have together and what you can do, you know, go for. Okay. Okay. So, um, let's see, because there was some comments that we got to get to. Nishia was the one. No, Nichelle said something. Oh, yeah. She, she said, I sure she, do be wanting revenge. She said, I sure do be wanting revenge. That's that Taurus. <laughs> um, and so she said, I think, I think people always say they want closure as a way to get back in front of the person who wronged them. Mm -hmm. Child, you don't need closure. All you need is a clear and direct path to oneself. Mm -hmm. If people learn how to honor thyself by saying it's okay, if this door has closed, we had fun and I learned so much while we were together and keep it moving, no matter, no more handicapping yourself. 
Yeah. And Terry said, nope, before I let go. <laughs> <laughs> and then Doc um, said, it is what it is. Each person has to do their work to understand that whatever happened. Something needs, some things need to just be and left as a closed situation. Yeah. Decide if the relationship or connection is worth the strain. For sure. Um, what about trying to, Sean said, what about trying to get closure just to get a better understanding of some of the mistakes we've made to one another? At that time, being able to go into that conversation with the understanding that this is not to get back together, but to learn from it and hopefully not carry that baggage into the next relationship. I am, um, am, am I off the mark with this one? Um, no, you have point. Yeah, yeah. I, I, let me read the comments, I'll come back. Yeah. Um, Tara said she was nervous. <laughs> and then um, Tashia said, enjoy moments in life and stop putting so much on others for your peace and happiness. For sure. Yes. Yeah. And then Tara yeah. said, love is a parable. Yes, and is. then <laughs> Dot said, oh, I like changing love for other terms of endearment. Good exercise to get clarity of the commitment. Mm. It's so funny because um, one of the songs I used to love in the 80s, I know Tara's going to know it. It was a song called um, More Than Words. Mm -hmm. And it basically said, like, saying, um, basically, if I took the words, I love you away, how would I say that I love you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people don't realize how dependent we are to oppression. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know how dependent we are um, to servitude. Yeah. And so a lot of us go into relationships as servants. We don't go into relationships as partners, as collaborators, as builders. So a lot of times our commitment or what we call commitment is obsession. A lot of times it is, you know, this weird um, fascination with the possibility of what could be. And we're delusional to a certain point because we don't talk about to the extent that we find comfort in pain. Even the things that we say that are pleasurable, to some extent, it restricts us and robs us of who we are. So nothing is wrong with saying, with staying or leaving, but you have to realize that you're in control of that situation and it's not predicated upon anybody else. Yeah. The, the thing that I want to clarify and make sure people understand, no one should be your driving force but you. They are a bonus to complement your driving force. When I say compliment, I'm not talking about, oh, that is nice. I'm talking about compliment, meaning they're gonna help you even perfect it even more. It's already a perfect motivation, and now they're gonna perfect it and take it to another level, the same that you do. That's an exchange. That's true communication. Communication is not just having a dialogue. Communication is the exchange of thoughts, words, ideas, feelings, emotions, consciousness. That's what communication, and that's what a relationship is about and you can have love for everybody but who you are attracted to is different yeah. who you're committed to is different and so like the young man said like sometimes what about closure um what about closure to learn from it yeah. a lot of times that closure is not really closure it's moving on to the next phase meaning we didn't work out you know, in a romantic relationship, but we may work out in a platonic relationship. I'm friends with several of my ex-girlfriends. There has never, I haven't had a bad breakup and I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I'm like, if we're mature enough to get together, the same things I liked about you when we, did, when we were together are the same things I'm gonna like about you when we were apart. We just weren't compatible. And a lot of people don't know how to have the conversation of saying, no, we just want compatible and move on. But what we are in an area where we feel like we can make a, we can make a mate. Yeah. Oh, if I just sit, spend time with them and give them this knowledge and shape them in this way and they'll be what I want. No, they got to be what they want. Yeah. And you got to decide if you want what they want at that moment. Yeah. 
before you continue to invest yourself in something that you already know was say I'm hopeless. Another song came like a penny with a hole in it. A lot of people don't understand that part. Um Yeah, let me see. Of course, brother. You know that don't The funny thing about love and you know relationships and marriage, like if you look up like the history of marriage and like some early civilizations and why they got married, it was so simple. You know, you know, lived in the same village, you know, he could build a house. I could have babies, we got married and we stayed together forever, you know. It's like um it was more so like uh it was more so like teamwork, you know, you got married to a woman that can, you know, you know, help you build your your empire, you know, help you work on your farm and things like that, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Um and they stay together forever and it's like now we have all this knowledge on love and everything else, and people don't stay together. People leave each other all the time. It's so crazy. Like, when things were so much simpler, like, even me and my wife, like, we got together. It was like, you know, I was at a place I was ready to settle down. There you go. I was ready to settle down. You know, my mom said, well, you write her mom, said, well, you got together. We still together happy as hell, you know? And, um, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. When you do the background, oh, no. you know? go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I mean, well, that's one of the things that we do with Love's of Parables is because the word love has been so convoluted and has so much stuff packed on to attach to it that we're yeah. so we're working to separate. That's like the brother, like the brother Jay was saying before. There's so many things that people pack into love like an overstuffed suitcase. That we're trying, that we're taking those words out and separating all those things because they are different. As far as these days in marriage and love and all that, we at a point in we at a point in society and civilization where we are dissecting all of these things about about humans or about us as people socially, from a biological standpoint, all of that. And so, the institution of marriage, whether it be you talking about different uh, previous civilization or here in the U.S. or wherever. <laughs> The institution of marriage, at least well, I'll talk about the U.S. because this, this, I grew up partially in the U.S. So the institution of marriage in the U.S. at this point in time now, this social media age, in the age of where millennials, which the two of us, Jay and myself, and probably you too, are, yeah, are, a, millennial. are a millennial. So in this age, we are finding out that, for one, I'll just tackle marriage right now. Marriage isn't for everybody. We are finding out that, and we're finding out that the marriage of old had a lot of stuff attached to it that we that people didn't talk about that we're finding out about now. Like I ain't signed up for that. Yeah, that it, it wasn't all peaches and cream, and we gonna be together forever. Yeah, we were together. People were together ever sometimes by because they didn't have no other options, or because they were they were bound by something. Wait, 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 wait. They were bound by something like finances or something else. So. As far as marriage goes, marriage is is layered and it's nuanced, and I don't think that it was any. I don't think that it was simpler before. There was just a lot of stuff we didn't know, or that wasn't being talked well, about. Well, I think at that time it was a lot more at stake than what it is now. You know why? People more so seek to be a good individual. You know, we never be like you know. Uh, I think you know as you grow and you get knowledge and you come into your home, you be like, you know, I want to do something for my community. But as you go into college or high school, you go, yeah, I want to do something for myself. You know what I'm saying? And it's kind of like we have to fight which one is better: doing it for your community or doing it for yourself. You know, um, I think more people are more of the feeling I got to do for myself, which is is good, but. In the time that we are in, in this day and time, we can't necessarily say, we can't put ourselves in just saying, well, it's just for me. It's not necessarily just for you. It's not because it trickles down what you do, trickles down to, to everybody next to you, trickles down to the next town over, to the next city, to the next state, to the next country. You know what I mean? You know? We have people of 
We have a village mindset, man. We can't work on it. We have a village mindset. That's who we are. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you, you know, if you really are individual, mm -hmm. go to the top of Mount Everest and just live there by yourself. You know what I mean? I live in New York City. It's a town. I have to really think about coming home and, you know, the people in my neighborhood is, you know, uh, <clears throat> is my people. Is my building safe? Is my block safe? Is everybody good? You know, what happened today? What happened outside? Everything is good. You know, please do it by what happened. You know what I'm saying? It's a village thing. We got to know what's going on in our area for everybody. That's why we got Facebook. What's going on in North Carolina? What's going on here? You know what I mean? So it's who we are. Marriage is not perfect. No institution is perfect. The point of having an institution and having a village mindset is so that you can be safe. You know what I mean? The point of wanting a husband or a wife is so that you can have security. That's that's really all it is. You know what I mean? It's like if you can really be an individual, then why do you want to make love with any and everybody that you see in the club or wherever you pass a fine girl, let me go home. She got a man, you know what I mean? It's like we run from the mindset, we run from it. Right? And we try to use it for all its good points, but we don't want to deal with the stuff that's tough. It's, it's living with somebody the rest of your life is not easy. Correct. It's not easy. I don't care how much you so called love them. You know what I'm saying? It's not easy. You know, so, but you know, we do it. We do it for security. And that's really all it is at the end of the day. I don't see nothing wrong with marriage, but I don't tell everybody to get married because I do agree with. No, marriage isn't for everybody, especially not in this day and time. Especially not now. It's, it's not for everybody, but everybody should want to build a legacy. You know what I mean? Okay. I, th I think that's this is very um, important that we do something like that. Okay. That's my opinion. Sean Stewart said the problem is it's easier to hold on to anger than it is to accept the fact that we just weren't compatible. And we waited too long to admit that. Now the pain of a breakup is justified by hurt feelings and time lost that we may never get back. Have y'all ever witnessed a situation where you broke up with someone and years later that person still hates you? I promise if you have seen it before, I can almost promise you there was no closure after that breakup. Um, I want to go back to something that you said um, initially. A lot of people don't understand that um, the whole intention of marriage was never centered around love. It was centered around community. Mm -hmm. um, right. It was two people came together not by the choice of the two people. They came together by the families of the people and saying, okay, is this what's best for our community? Mm -hmm them joining together, them coming. Love had nothing to do with their interaction. However, what people miss is that love for your, true love was taking place because it was a communal love in a sense of, I love my community, which is unity, which we're talking about, therefore I will do this, or I decide to do this. What we have made love came later on when we confuse love with other actions, like making love is not love. That's sex, that's lust, that's eros, that's romanticism. It's not love. Loyalty and commitment, all these things, that's not love. You can be committed to people. Tell me this. I know people who have worked jobs for 24 years and they hated it. I know people who have been married and don't want to be married. I know people who've died, separate, and they they had separate bedrooms and everything, but they was married for all these years. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that has nothing to do with it, and we got to get rid of that misnomer. Mm -hmm. Now, it is a bonus if you happen to truly, like you're, the person that you love, you are also attracted to, and you want to be committed to, that's a beautiful thing. But we got to stop with the expectations of that we put on, we put on situations that turn into putting on people. Yeah. So now you have people who are walking into something saying, I want what grandma and granddaddy had. 
but at the same time, they don't realize what they went through. Right. But it's also whenever things are a little bumpy, they feel like the weight is falling. Mm -hmm. When they could have just walked into it, like one of the things that my wife and I said in the very beginning, we don't want what nobody else has. We're going to make this marriage. It's tailor-made. Yeah. So we might do things that other people may not, may not say that we should be doing. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, what works for us? <laughs> and the problem that comes in is when... See, we give people too many licenses and permission to trespass. Yeah. We give them permission to trespass into our lives and get mad because they now have messed up our lawn. But you allowed them into your yard. You allowed them into your house. You said eat of my food, but then get mad because you have no food? You get mad because they, took, they messed up your yard? We got to stop giving people permission to trespass in our lives. The marriage is an agreement, which I do agree with, but that agreement is between two people. And so a lot of times people don't stop and realize that. A lot of times people don't realize that, okay, I do agree with what the brother said. A lot of us have went into situations that weren't that great, and we knew it wasn't that great, but guess what we told ourselves? Well, if I keep doing it, I might change. I might can make myself be attracted to them. I might can make myself kind of like them. I might can make myself tolerate this. No, you should have been real with yourself from the very beginning. And a lot of us don't know how to trust our instinct because we have, we have grown numb to our instincts where we don't even hear our voice. So we have grown codependent on the voices of others to validate who we are. And I think that that's the bigger issue, and we have to break that chain of codependency. We do need a level of independency so we can be interdependency. If, if you want to be a power for good in your community, master being independent so you can be interdependent so we all can lift and elevate one another. And stop that, I'm looking for my better half. That's half of this problem right there. Yeah, because you're literally a half of a half. Right. Also, the fourth <laughs> <laughs> word. So, what I did want to say too, what you said earlier um, about being an individual and being and and being in a union. One of the things that Jay and I talk about is, as people, and I'll say society right now in the U.S., we seem to have a problem with recognizing that multiple things can be true at the same time oh come on you know and so there's a balance of having all things being concurrently true you know and so you can be an individual because you're an individual before you get married or before you come into a union you can be an individual and still be in a union and still work for the better the greater good of that union you can still be an individual in your community but like jay said be interdependent and still uplift the people in your community and that goes back to that goes back to the stifling of self, which is a whole other conversation. But you can you can be an individual and still and still and pour into and live, uplift and, and support others, um, because to love to love yourself is to love others, and vice versa. So, yeah, that's all I have to say. And I will tax that because we got to understand that we got to understand that there's one, one and oneness. Uh -huh. um, a lot of us don't understand that there's one, one and oneness. There's one me individual. There's one um, me being whole or us being whole together. And then there is oneness when we are a community, a body, an uh, effort. But a lot of people don't look at that. And see, here's the problem when people come and talk to us that they, when they get into any type of relationship, they quick to say one plus one is two, but that's the problem because you're adding instead of multiplying because one times one is one. And so we're missing the whole part of what we're talking about. We'll say we're supposed to multiply. We're supposed to be fruitful. We're supposed to do all of these things, but you add it. That's the problem. You keep adding. And so because you don't realize that a person shouldn't add to your life, yeah. You should be complete. Mm -hmm. They should be complete. And so whatever y'all have, it multiplies. Right. Multiplies means it's multiple things that are happening, but because we look at one as one, meaning it's singular, we miss the plural of one. That's our Aramaic term that's um, called akkad, which means oneness without any lack, complete and whole. On the back of your penny that we have in America, it says, e pluribus unum, which means out of many, one. We're missing the whole point of oneness, and we're treating it as a singularity, 
instead of un really understanding relationship. Because you don't understand your oneness individually, you're never going to understand your oneness coupled. I'm just saying. Word. 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 Um, Tashia said, I'm my own security. I would never marry for that. I want my partner to marry me. You should enter into a union only after you are 110% whole as man or woman. Once again, if you keep making him or her responsible for your needs mentally, emotionally, or physically, when they are there, when they leave their love goes. So I believe for myself, I seek a mate who's so happy and in love with him that he sees me as his reflection. That's pretty deep. Yeah. We got Lori that just came on. Yeah, that's dope. I like that. Yeah, I really love that. I, like, I love that. Yeah. You know what, though? No, bro, what I like about this, it tied right into the next um, topic, which was um, how does someone or how can someone lose themselves trying um, to be a better person in a relationship? And that's what you do when you don't understand who you are, when you have no ideology of who you are, you're going to always seek validation from other people. Yeah. How many times have we heard a song from a man, from a woman or a man, and the, or a song or, or, you know, anything like that, where it says, I'm looking for somebody who can fix me or I want someone to make me better, make me whole again. Like, we, that, that is just... You looking for a doctor? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, like, you know, yeah, literally go to a doctor, seek some help, you know? And yeah. so, and I think that's one of the things, that's one of the things that when I talk to brothers that, because I've gone through it myself, I, you know, I talk to them and I say, you know, before you get into something or into, you know, a relationship or a union, whatever you want to call it, you know, make sure you're your best self, you complete your whole, you know, so that. You're not looking for someone else to give you something that they can't necessarily give you. It might be a temporary fix. It's like a, it's like a drug. It's like a, it's like a drug. Right. You looking, you looking for emotional crack. Right. And like what she was saying, you go into a relationship already with a handicap. Yeah. And you, and the person has a disadvantage because now they have to leverage whatever your handicap is. Yeah. Um, I think that we don't spend enough time with self and pleasing oneself and understanding who self is because early on I say this all the time and people and I and I pray that some people really get it from the time that we came in this world we were taught to deny ourselves for the first two years it was no I don't do that uh-uh do that and, and, and hear me out yes it was to teach us how to survive it yes it was a form of protection but it also was a simul assimilation it forced us to go by the rule. It forced us to be dependent on somebody else's voice and somebody else's approval. So if a person goes through this for 18 years, some 19 and some 24, depending on their family dynamics, some even 26, if they go through this for 26 years, how are you going to tell somebody to be grown when they live their whole life as a child? How are you going to tell somebody, okay, you got to make a choice and listen to your voice if we haven't taught people how to hear their own voice because they done heard mama, daddy, grandpa, the community, the teacher, the pastor, the preacher, the whoever it is, they heard everybody else's voice and they don't even know what their voice sounds like. How do you expect somebody to know what their image is when they've never seen a reflection of themselves? Nobody has ever seen them. Because a reflection is based off a of distorted light, and depending on the light element, will determine how you will look. So, who you image is something that is inward. That's great, man. You have to determine what you are. You have to determine what you look like, and realize that what you look like is more than an external concept. But if you don't hear your voice, you will never develop your image. Because what are you speaking about yourself? You can say you're beautiful all day long and don't even believe it. Everybody else can tell you you're beautiful, but you can feel ugly on the inside and you're like, well, I don't feel beautiful. Oh, don't we know that? So you really got to make sure that you start to hear your voice. And if you don't know, take that time. That gut is the real you trying to come out. And guess what you do? You suppress it. Yeah. How many times you said my first mind? Yeah. Or something told me. Yeah. 
my gut told me. Right. I should have listened to my gut. Right. You should have and start. <laughs> yeah. You should have listened. You yeah. need to keep on listening because mm -hmm. your instinct is your first defense mechanism. And they have, through condition, through social construct, through the paradigms, they have conditioned us to deconstruct and disarm our first defense system. So you wonder why you have, you know, trust issues. Mm -hmm. Well, because you never trusted yourself. Yeah. Mm. Guess what, bro? That whole hour and a half <laughs> went by fast. It just ran by. Yeah, yeah we well, at nine twenty five. And so we spend the last five minutes doing what we call um positive brother shout out. When you shout out brothers, you know that you feel, you know, need encouragement or are doing great things but don't get that opportunity to have a pu a public forum to do it. So this is your opportunity to shout out those brothers um that are doing great things and need to hear that. Okay. Go, he's on you. Go first, special guest. Yeah, you are a guest. Um, shout out to me. Uh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you know, you got to give yourself a credit. I'm going to get my credit. That's true. I ain't never thought about it. My husband. So, you know, shout out to me. I'm a great father working hard. Um, shout out to brothers like you, Isaiah. Shout out to Faith organization, Fathers Alive in the Hood. Uh -huh. You know, who else, man? You know, shout out to everybody. Shout out to you guys, Brothers Empowerment. Word. You know, Brother Dwayne, Cordell. Shout out to God. Yeah. You know, that's pretty much it for right there. <laughs> you know, everybody else, all the brothers watching. Shout out to y'all, man. Yeah. You know, shout out to y'all. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, okay, so. I definitely, first and foremost, I always do the brothers that I'm on the show with in my immediate vicinity. But shout out to y'all two brothers because this kind of dialogue right here, with without the without the aggression, with just with common ground, is what I think is needed more so amongst us brothers. We are we lack that. There's too much aggression and too much negativity. Not enough balance when brothers are talking, especially when they have opposing viewpoints. So shout out to y'all brothers especially because this right here is what's needed. And it gives, even though we have different viewpoints and we're, and we're speaking on a lot of topics, this stuff gives me peace of mind because I can, it gives me the, the hope that I can go out and talk to any brother about anything. Um, shout out to all the brothers that are on the line, of course. I see uh, my man Ricky just chimed in. So Ricky, what's up? But shout out to, shout out to Rob, Sean, all the, all the brothers that are on the line. Also, I want to give a special shout out to all the brothers that are out there that, like Jay said before, don't necessarily know what their voice looks like and know who they are. It took me a while to figure that out, so I know what it's like to be lost and not know who you are. And shout out to also to the brothers who are constantly getting told that they need to do better or they're getting the weight of the community of what men are doing thrown at them. I see a lot of negativity from brothers and sisters online saying, you know, brothers need to do better. Y'all are, are failing. Y'all are, you know, this and that. And that doesn't solve anything. You know, throwing negative at people constantly telling them you need to do better, you need to do this, has the opposite effect. I'm going in the I'm going in the way, I'm going in the opposite direction of all that noise, all that negativity. So shout out to those brothers who constantly hear that and keep trucking on and doing what you're doing and being positive in the wake of all that negativity. Um, so yeah. um, I definitely um I'm I'm glad that Wally came on the show because I actually have been asking him for a year since we had Brother Empowerment to be on the show because um, one of the things I've known um, while via social media, the power of social media, I've known him through social media for two years, but for the year that we've been doing Brother Empowerment, I brought him on because I knew my instinct, my gut told me that he's an incredible um, being, an incredible energy. And I think that his dynamic is needed um, in this world. And so what other people didn't know that there were several times that I went to Wally on a sideline and it was never to berate him. It was never to beat him up. It was always to speak to that good. And I see that good in him. And you guys yeah, witnessed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up. <laughs> you guys witnessed his awesomeness tonight. And this is really just not even part of who he really is. It's not even a crumb of who he is. And I look forward to his journey. So I am excited that he's moving to the North Carolina area because 
I would get an opportunity to witness his full uncovering. And I, I just feel like this young man is going to be a force to be reckoned with, um, period, once. He fine tunes everything and his delivery, man, it's going to be phenomenal. So I'm excited yeah. for you to be on here and I'm excited for what you're going to do for the world. I'm excited for your decision to be a husband. I'm excited for your decision to be a father. I'm, I'm excited for your decision to even reconcile broken relationships and the relationships that you're thinking about. Yeah. So um, I think that a lot of people need to see that in a um, public form. And um, one of the things that he asked me on the phone, um, has anybody ever really rejected um, what I've given them? And I told him on the phone, no, because I'm selective with who I invest in. Right. And I only invest in people that I think that are worthy of what, I, what I'm given and while it was worth that investment. And I can't wait he come down and add to the brother empowerment dynamic because we're going to put him to work. <laughs> he don't even know it yet. He on his own truck. It's going to be love is a parable on the truck. Um, but definitely to you, <laughs> definitely to you, my brother, Sean, I can't wait to meet you. We have our brother empowerment cookout in March. So I definitely can't wait to meet you. Um, and I look forward to the things that you're going to bring. I like your insight. I like your intention. I like the things that you're doing. Uncle Marcus, who's our community uncle, um, my brothers, um, if I go all the way down, I got Daryl, Vincent, Rodney, um, Tramel, Mike, Mike. Um, my brothers, I appreciate them and I love them. Steve, my cousin who was on, um, Joseph Stout, who I met through social media, who always drops knowledge. And I just thank you guys. And remember this, if nobody else in this world, if you feel like nobody else in this world love you, Guess what? We now do. you got three people yep. that are here that love you. All right? You guys take care. Make it a wonderful night. And we are out.